demand gen campaign performance is driven hugely by the images and videos that you have added into that campaign. It's a highly visual campaign type, and it relies a lot on having strong visuals. And in the past, it's been a little bit difficult to understand which images and videos have been performing well, but now Google has released a campaign experiment that actually lets you test images and videos in an AB format right next to each other. So in this video, we're gonna walk you through how to set up a demand gen asset campaign experiment so you can understand which images and videos are performing best in your campaigns. So to begin making our campaign experiment for demand gen assets, first thing we need is an account that has demand gen campaigns that have been running. Now in this account, these campaigns have been paused, but we'll still be able to go through the setup process of how you would create an experiment. So the first thing we need to do is head into the experiments portion of the interface. That's gonna be over in the main menu under campaigns. We're just gonna click experiments. And then from here, we need to click the blue plus button to get started. And then the first thing you need to know is that this type of asset test for demand gen campaigns is something that is new and rolling out in beta. You will know if you have access to it if the first option you have with creating an experiment looks like this where it says campaign features and settings, assets, campaign types, and custom. If your screen doesn't look like this, and the first portion that it asks you is around the type of campaign you want to use for this, whether it's search or display or demand gen, then you might not have access to this feature just yet. For the most part, it does look like it's rolled out to all of our accounts. I couldn't even find an old version to show you, so hopefully you already have it. But if you don't, just be patient, it'll come soon. But for testing the assets, you guessed it, we've got to choose assets as what we want to test. We can then choose assets provided by you. We'll then choose the campaign type, which for this is going to be demand gen. And then with that, all of the other options go away and we just need to click continue. Now for the demand gen experiment, you've got a couple different options here. The first is going to be this custom or advanced piece. This is not what we're going to use, even though for the most part, I like to use custom experiments. We're actually just going to use the AB test image and video assets option here. As you can see, this is the piece that's still in beta. So let's go ahead and click on this one. And the rest of this screen is going to be the entirety of the campaign experiment setup for testing assets. The first thing we need to do is choose the success metric that we want to have. Now, unlike some of the other campaign types and campaign experiment types, we've got a relatively limited set of options here. So the first is going to be average CPC. Next is cost per conversion. Next is conversion rate and then click through rate. That's it. So depending on which type of metrics your demand gen campaign is focused on, whether it's clicks or conversions, you might want to align that metric with this metric as well. Or you could just be like us and probably more often than not, we're focused on cost per conversion. So let's just go ahead and choose that one just to make it easy. In the end, you'll be able to see the performance difference between all of the different metrics for your campaign experiment. But Google uses the success metric to try and determine for itself if you think the treatment or control arm performed better. It's really all it is. You're just basically telling Google, this is the metric I'm trying to improve the most. So whichever one has the better instance of cost per conversion or CPC or click-through rate, that's what we're gonna consider the winner. For the next stage, let's go ahead and scroll down here. You'll be able to see most of the rest of the setup. But now we need to choose which campaign we want to use as the control. So let's go ahead and click in here. Now, as I mentioned, this is a live client account. There were three demand gen campaigns running. They are all paused, but it still lets us choose them for the campaign experiment building. Let's go ahead and do that. We're getting this error again because the campaign is paused, but just ignore that for now. And then strangely enough, before you do anything else, Google requires you to click this little button that says create treatment campaign. Not really sure why it doesn't do this automatically because when you click it, it just pre-populates everything for you and there's not really anything else you can do, but you still have got to click the button. So now if we scroll down a bit here, you can see that we have four different lines that we can change. If I'll just close this one real quick, you can see here, this is the first, second, third and fourth. And again, I'm sorry some of this is blurred out, but because we have this in a live client account, we need to blur it out a little bit. But each one of these is going to be the same. So let's just look at one of them. But here you can see we've got this custom audience ebook one broken into two sections. First is control. You can see the 16 images that are listed here and you can view the asset details by clicking this button here. And that took me to the asset report for this specific ad, which basically is just giving me an insight into which images and logos and headlines and descriptions are working the best. So if you need a refresher on which assets within your demand gen ad are performing well, 
you can easily see that. But back in the campaign builder, we then have the treatment section over here on the side. And you can see we have the same 16 images here. If you wanted to adjust anything, you could just hover over and click the X to get rid of it. Or you can click the edit button. And that opens us into the image selector that we would normally see when we're trying to create regular demand gen campaigns. We have all the same sources of images, whether they are suggested or likely ones that have been used recently. Assets that are already in the library, you can use Google's AI to generate images for your demand gen campaign. You can also have Google scan and crawl your website or any of your social profiles for images or you can just directly upload right from this field. But here's where you would go in and add in all of the different assets that you want for this treatment. So let's just say you were trying to create an experiment and effectively what you wanted to do is keep all of your control images. But as you can see, most of these are focused just on people in a certain kind of business setting. Maybe in your treatment campaign, you wanted to select a bunch of images that were not of people and were focused on something else, whether it was the specific product or maybe a location that ties in closely with what your offer is. Whatever you're trying to test, this is gonna be the section where you need to adjust those different images. Now, one thing to note, you'll see that down below the asset section, there is nothing that has to do with any of the text for the headlines or descriptions or anything else that is in a demand gen campaign. None of those options are here. This AB experiment is only for the images or videos that you want to run in a demand gen campaign. So if you're trying to test different headlines and descriptions and all of that good stuff, you're probably gonna need to use the custom experiment rather than this asset test because this is designed only for the visual assets that accompany a demand gen ad. Now, speaking of, when you create a new demand gen ad, you have to choose which type of ad you want. Single image is what we've been using for the experiment example I've been showing you, but there's also video ads and carousel ads. If we go back into the builder, if I choose a different campaign here, again, I already have to say create treatment campaign. And you'll see here, not only is this campaign paused, it's actually got an end date, which Google doesn't like. But now you can see we have a video ad asset in here as well. So again, it's the same control and treatment, and you can adjust that. And if you want to edit and choose a different video, you can do that. But here you can see we have an image ad alongside a video ad. And if you were to have a carousel ad in here as well, then that would likely show up as a third line item and be listed as a carousel ad. And again, you'll be able to adjust the creatives and the images specifically, but not any of the actual text that is in here as well. And let's say we've gone through each of these different ads and selected all of the different creative assets that we wanted to test. And again, you can choose just one ad or just a couple, whatever you wanna do, you can adjust however many ads within your demand gen campaign that you want. So depending on what you're trying to test, make sure that you're applying everything to all of the ads or only one or two of them. You can see here, we've got the experiment budget. Everything is gonna be split evenly. We cannot adjust that. And the total budget is just based on the budget that is assigned to the control campaign. So if you wanted to give this campaign experiment more or less budget, you just need to adjust that on the control campaign, just like you would any other campaign. And then next we can choose the experiment dates or how long we want this to run. You can choose a start date that is either one day in the future from when you are building the campaign experiment or you can select something in the future, depending on what makes the most sense for you. You then get to choose if you want this test to last for a certain duration of time. And if you do, it's gonna default you to 30 days, but the longest you can run is going to be 84 days. As you can see, I typed in 86, knowing that 84 was gonna be the longest. So if you wanted to, you could run it for 84 days, or you could go in and choose that you want it to end on a specific date. So if for some reason you want this campaign to run way in the future, you still can only let it run for 84 days, but maybe you wanted it to end on October 31st for some reason. Now you could let this run, see how everything performs and get the data once your campaign is done. And the last couple things here are pretty straightforward. So the experiment name, you can give this whatever name that you want. Just know that you have only 100 characters to use for this name. You will then see in the treatment campaign that we retained the original campaign name. Sorry, some of those blurred out, but it does contain my creative test Q325 as part of the campaign name. So whatever you do apply down below will also show up in the campaign manager as part of the treatment campaign name. If we scroll back down to the bottom, you then have 2048 characters to give a description if you want. This is just something that will be helpful for you in the future if you run a lot of experiments and forget what your goal was here. Or if you wanna be able to look back, 
in future months and years and understand what you were trying to test. Maybe adding a description could help. And then when you're finished with that, we do have a new box around EU political ads. Are you running any EU political ads? No. If you are, there's probably some steps you have to go through for this. But for now, we're not doing this. I don't even want to get into that. Let's just leave it as no. And then when you get finished, you would just click save. You'll be ready to go. Now, when you get finished launching your demand gen experiment and you want to be able to review performance, you should be able to come to the demand gen experiment section here. And here we can see our creative test Q325 is here. Right now it's being created because I just made it. So I can't really show you what the performance is going to look like but we do have another experiment that's running. That'll be the best way to show you what your stats will look like. We currently have a bid test running on one of our search campaigns. So I'm just gonna click here. And then effectively, this is what your demand gen reporting should look like to start. You'll have a line item for your control where you get all of the different metrics that you want and one for the treatment. So depending on all of the changes you made to that treatment campaign, you'll be able to see at a very high level which one is driving the best clicks, cost, click-through rate, conversion rate, cost per conversion, all that good stuff. If you want more specific insights into which assets from that new group are performing well, you'll basically just need to click into the exact demand gen campaign, that treatment campaign, and you'll still be able to see the ad assets in the exact same way that we did when we looked at the asset performance for the control arm previously. As a quick refresher, that looked just like this. So effectively, if you clicked into the treatment arm of your demand gen asset experiment, you'll be able to find the asset details chart that looks just like this. But at a high level within the experiments manager, you'll only be able to see line items for control versus treatment at a very high level. Personally, I think this type of experiment can be really useful if you need to come up with some definitive metrics around which types of creatives tend to perform best for your demand gen audience. As I mentioned earlier, I like the idea of making big categories of asset types to test one version versus the other. Our current controls have lots of people oriented images in a very specific business setting. But if you were to test lots of images or videos that focused more on a different aspect of the offer, whether it's a physical location or the product itself or something that is basically not people in that given business setting, you'd be able to kind of understand at a high level which type of imagery works best. And then you can drill down into the specific images and see which ones are the most compelling within that theme at a high level. Now it's not guaranteed that whatever you launch is going to perform better than your control, but that would be a great finding to have if you already have some of the best performing assets in place. And again, you still can't test the headlines and descriptions in the same way that you can the image, video, and carousel assets, but that's okay. You'll still be able to understand how they're performing and you'll still be able to view the asset details within this specific report. The last thing actually I do want to go back and look at again. Unfortunately, I can't get back to the screen I wanted to look at, but I do want to highlight something. Based on the way this campaign experiment works, any change that you make to the control arm once your experiment is running will also be applied to the treatment arm of your campaign. So if you were to adjust the bid strategy or the location targeting or the budget, any of those adjustments would also be applied to the treatment campaign. Now the same is not true in the reverse. You won't be able to change the budget on the treatment campaign, but if you were to change the location targeting or the audience targeting or any of those other smaller settings within the campaign in the treatment arm, those would not be applied to the control arm. So if while well, your campaign experiment for assets is running, be wary of whatever changes you make being applied to either one or the other arm of the experiment because you don't want to have a false positive or false negative because you forgot to roll out changes in the other place and something else ended up being the difference in the performance. Overall, I think this is a great feature that you can use within your demand gen campaigns to have a very clear visual about which types of images, videos, and carousel ads work best. And hopefully this option gives you a really controlled way to have finalized data to know which themes are performing for your account. If you've got any other questions about setting up these asset level campaign experiments for demand gen campaigns or anything else in the Google Ads interface, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.